Restoring a backup archive made with Akiba Backup is a straightforward process. In the typical scenario, you will want to extract the archive directly to your server. You can do that using Akiba Kickstart. In order to download Akiba Kickstart, we will have to visit akibabackup.com. In the main page, just click on Download Official Releases. Scrolling down the page, you will find Akiba Kickstart. Just click on it. In this new page, the latest release is always listed on top, so let's click on it. And finally, we have to download the Kickstart package. Once you download Kickstart, you will see that it comes in a zip archive. We first have to extract this archive. If you go inside the extracted files, you will see that there is Kickstart PHP, which is the actual script, and a lot of ini files, which are just the translation files. Our next task is uploading Kickstart and the backup archive to our site server. So let's begin with Kickstart. I'm going to select all files and just move them to my site. Once Kickstart is uploaded, I will go and upload the archive files themselves. Very important! If you have a multi-part backup archive, which means that you have a JPA file, a J01 file, J02 file, etc., you have to upload all the files. Kickstart will need all of these files, called archive parts, in order to extract the backup archive, otherwise it will show you an error during extraction. So, now that I have selected both files, I will just move them to my server. Once all the files have been transferred to the server, I have to go back to my browser and launch Kickstart in order to start the extraction process. In order to do that, I will just type in my site's URL slash kickstart.php. This is the first page you see in Kickstart. Take a few minutes and read the things you should know about Kickstart. When you're done, click on the link to close this message. In the archive file drop-down, you will see the archive files that you have uploaded. As you can see, there is only one item on this list. Remember that I uploaded all the archive parts. Why only one file is shown here? This is because Kickstart automatically determines that all the archive parts are parts of the same big archive and will only display me the main archive file name, the .jpa file. Just select it from the list. On most servers, you will also have to change the writeToFiles method. Right here, it is selected the directly method. This works very well on hosts using SUPHP, but it doesn't work on most shared hosts. In order to let Kickstart work on a shared host, you have to change that to use FTP and fill in the FTP information below. You can find more information about that in our Quickstart guide. For now, on this server, I will have to use the directly method. Most likely, you don't need to set up any other options, so just click on the Start button. The extraction will now take place. It will only take a few seconds. Once the extraction is complete, just click on Run the Installer button. This will launch the installation script which was included in the archive and extracted by Kickstart. The first page of the restoration script shows you some configuration settings of your server. Under the required settings header, every item should be green, otherwise Joomla will not run properly on that server. Do you note know that there are some sliders, like optional settings? These settings, as the title says, are optional. Ideally, they should all be green, but if you have a red item, it doesn't mean that your Joomla site will not work on that server, just that there might be some problems along the way. As you can see, I do have a red item, but I'm not worrying too much about that. Let's just click on the next button. This page allows me to set up and restore my site's main database. Akiba Backup Installer, the installation script Akiba Backup is using, remembers the previous settings of your site. If you're restoring on the same server, just like I do, you don't have to change anything here. However, if you're transferring from one server to a new server, you will most likely want to change the database server host name, the username, the password, and the database name. Once again, please consult our quick start guide for further information. Right now, I can just click on Next. That was a very small site, and its database restored very quickly. 
If you have a very large database, you will actually see this progress bar being filled up until your entire database is restored. When it's done, just click on the OK button so that we can move to the next step. In this page, you can set up your site's parameters. You can change the site name if you want, the email address, or the email sender name. This next option is called the Live Site URL. Normally, it should be left blank. However, on some servers, you have to type in the site's domain name and directory that you are restoring to in order for safe URLs to work. On this server, we don't need that. I can just click on this little checkbox here, which will make sure that the temporary and log path directories are automatically configured to something that makes sense on this site. You can find more information about what this checkbox does in our quick start guide. If you are on a shared host which doesn't use SUPHP, you will most likely want to enable the FTP options by clicking on this slider. In here, you can enable Joomla's FTP layer and give the host name, port, username, password, and directory so that Joomla can write your site files using FTP. If you show WIS, you can also change the super administrator settings. Just select one of your super administrators and type in a new password. I'm going to type Temo in here. You can also change the email address of that super administrator. Once you're done, just click on the next button. Akiba Backup Installer has now written the configuration PHP file of your Joomla site. At this point, we can close this tab and go back to Kickstarts tab. As you can see, the button has changed now and reads Clean Up. By clicking that button, Kickstart will remove itself, its translation files, the backup archive, and will also rename htaccess.bak to .htaccess. htaccess.bak is the temporary name under which Kickstart will extract a .htaccess file if it is present in your backup archive, so as to minimize the possibility of interference during the extraction process. So just click on Clean Up. Now our site is ready for use. By clicking on Visit Your Site's Frontend, we can see the restored site. If you click on Visit Your Site's Backend, you go to the administrator login page. As you can see, I can type in admin and demo the new password that I have set up and click on Login to log in to my Joomla site's backend administrator. That's it. You now have a fully working site on your server.